Welcome back to episode 169 of Chess Journeys, Tales of Adult Improvement. Here on Chess Journeys, we love to explore the glories of ratings gain, but more often the plateaus and sometimes below that, the pits of despair. If you want to support the show, you can go to Patreon Chess Journeys. I want to thank our queen level supporters. And this is going to be hard. I'm going to read this whole list and I'm not feeling great. So if I mess up your name, I'm sorry already. Tim Everett, Scott Deep, or B6 Joe, Matt Bush, Jay Garrison, Don Rich Burgess, Brandon Hallside, Jeff Pearson, Tobias Rex, Bob Berger, Nicholas Harrigan, Rich, Bradley Fenner, Fletcher Ray, Nathan Peterson, Christian Glaw, Andrew Rimmer, Travel Mocha, Mohammed Ibrahim, Vasant, Bruce Campbell, and King Level supporter Ian Samples. See, I can usually do that in one breath. That was like 12 breaths. So, you know, so it's a lot harder. Uh, if you want to appear on the show, fill out the Google form in the show notes. We do all want to hear your story. I've been uh, trying to go through that quite a bit. And if you're interested in improvement, which I think you are, Noel Studer's uh, programs are amazing. Uh, he has a code in the show notes to support the show, supports you. You get a discount. Everyone wins. Well, let's uh, bring in our guest of honor. Uh, Suve is an adult improver, a chessable author with a course Breaking 1000, and pretty much just an overall chess celebrity. So, uh, Suve, welcome to the to uh, the the show. And have you had a chance to play any chess yet today? Thank you so much for having me back on. I'm really excited about it. And uh, as for the question, did I play any chess today? I'm wondering, does it count if I played uh, past uh, midnight uh, before <laughs> I went to sleep? <laughs> I suppose it does. It's technically today. Okay, uh, if that counts, I, I did some uh, blitz before I fell asleep. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you're up past <laughs> but, midnight, uh, and then don't you have like a regular m job? I, I feel like you do. Yeah, I do, uh, but uh, I just couldn't uh, put uh, put the blitz away yesterday, and I stayed up uh, a little bit too long. So uh, I, I guess uh, it's a bad habit. <laughs> Or a great habit, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as for serious chess, I have not uh, yet had the time to do that today. I've just been working all day, and then I ran to the gym, uh, took a shower, and now I'm here with you instead of playing. So that's my excuse. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is your playing time. Okay. Yes, yes. Well, thank you for uh, pulling yourself away from playing to, to chat with us today. I really appreciate it. Um, I'll probably do some more blitz before I fall asleep tonight, so it's fine. <laughs> okay. Is that your normal, um, like, daily uh, chess is, like, some blitz when you can find it? Or do you try to carve out time for longer games as well? I definitely try to carve out uh, time for longer games. Uh, it mostly uh, gets to be rapid, so I play uh, 15 plus uh, 10. And... Um, Lately, I've been doing some 10 minutes games without increment as well, uh, just when periods are a bit more hectic, just to have more time constraints, because the 15 plus 10 games, they can get pretty long. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also try to do classical games. My favorite is actually 90 plus 30, but I haven't been able to do those in a while, but uh, I've done some 30 plus 20. Um, okay. So I've done that uh, against uh, some fellow chess punks. Uh, oh. And I think my la latest match was against uh, Iris. So shout out to her. That was a pretty thrilling uh, game. And uh, I sometimes play the pool as well. But I feel like the quality of the 30 plus 20 games you get against the random pool, it is a bit uh, um, variety in, in the quality you get. Because sometimes the matchup is just it's too easy and, and, and the games doesn't get that good. So I think it's better to do those against people, you know, and trust. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, when you say you like to play 90-30, do you mean like online you play 90-30? Or do you mean in person? I've, I, I've, not, I've done that, yeah. Uh, oh, and nice. I know that is surprising to some because um, I, I've heard that others, they, they can have this uh, problem with their focus when, when they play online, mm -hmm. that hasn't been a huge problem uh, in my case. And um, I guess it's also a bit easier since I don't have children. So I won't have any <laughs> small uh, ones knocking on my door or pulling me away from the computer screen. So I'm a bit, uh, it's a bit easier for me to go into that uh, hermit mode, I guess. But, uh, yeah. but for me lately, uh, the challenge has been just finding 
the time really out of my day to do those games because there's been so much work. Um, but but I've been able to do some like thirty plus twenty, so so that's good. But I've been doing them on online, so I haven't been doing like OTB for for a good while now. Um, okay. Yeah. We'll come back to that in a second. So ninety thirty, you're able to actually concentrate. Do you like close <laughs> all the other tabs on your computer so things aren't beeping and buzzing at you? Yeah, I only have uh, the chessboard open, and I also use the send mode. So I can't see the rating and okay. only the chessboard. And then I also have my headphones on uh, because I'm very like sensitive to noise. I get very easily annoyed if I can like hear my partner out in the kitchen banging with the cabinets yeah. and things like that. I will get a bit angry. So I need to have my <laughs> headphones on and then listen to like some chill music, okay. uh, preferably without lyrics so that I'll be able to concentrate. Mm -hmm. And I like that. But uh, yeah, to be honest, uh, it's mostly it's mostly rapid uh, when it comes to the longer games and a bit too much blitz and bullet than I would like to admit, but I guess I'm here to be honest. So <laughs> okay, well we appreciate that. Um, yeah, I w I joined a uh, like fifty plus guys, like not not just men, but that's just who happened to be in it. But it was like some men from the club <laughs> yeah. that were fifty plus. And we played online and we played 45 5. And I was like, okay, this should be doable. And there was one game where my opponent was like, I was really surprised you took 12 minutes in that position. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's when I had to go uh, tuck my child in and like a <laughs> story. And I'm like, I wasn't thinking for 12 minutes. He was like, oh, that explains so much. So, and he's like, why, why are you thinking here? Just like this obvious move. And yeah. uh, little does he know. You're busy with your <laughs> little one. Like he captured a piece and it's an obvious recapture. And he thinks I'm looking at like sacrifices. And I'm like, no, 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 I, I wasn't looking at any of that. So. Yeah, that's the reality of being an adult, I guess. But uh, I have to say what I feel really proud of myself uh, regarding is that I've been doing a lot of tactics lately um, just on the chess.com app. Okay. And... Uh, I've gotten actually a bit addicted to it. So I would say that some of the puzzles, they're a bit of a, uh, the quality of the puzzles, they, they vary a bit. Like you will get some very good ones and then some of the puzzles are a bit weird. But like overall, I, th I think the exercises are good. And, and when you play them on the app, they have sort of gamified it in a way. So it's oh, kind yeah. of like a little mini game. And uh, I noticed that uh, I had the most puzzle points out of my whole playlist, my friend list, <laughs> except one guy, like he was miles ahead of me. Ooh. And then like my competition, uh, sense of competition got activated and I just got hung up. I have to beat that guy and get more puzzle points. So now I'm actually at, ahead of him. And I don't even think I know this guy or he even knew that I was in competition with him. But uh, it was a good motivator. And now it's just become a habit uh, that I do the puzzles. Like when I don't have anything to do. And I think it's better to do these uh, puzzles on the app instead of like doom scrolling on, on TikTok or <laughs> Instagram or whatever. Uh, yeah, it's better for the brain for sure. I feel like it's a good healthy addiction to be addicted to doing puzzles. So what is your uh, puzzle rating right now? Just so, Ooh, just so we can compare, because maybe I can give you a new competition. I don't know. I'll have to check. Uh, I'm, is, op so. I'm opening my app right now. Okay, me too. I'll um, okay, so my, okay, so my puzzle rating is down, uh, oh. but right now it's like 2,540. Okay, mine's um, twenty six sixty two right now. So like, you could give yourself ooh. another. We we could friend up, and then you could you could try to get ahead of me. There you go. Yeah, that uh, that sounds uh, that sounds interesting for sure. Uh, I will be able to beat you. I'm just nice. uh, no, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but I, I'm I'm gonna get like uh, obsessed with this now. Okay. But, uh, I do actually feel the difference uh, when I'm playing games now because I'm doing so many tactics. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I feel it's helping a lot. I like, uh, yeah. I feel like I'm finding a lot of cool things in my games because of it. Yeah. Um, how many tactics a day do you think you're doing? That is a good question. I guess we can also check that statistic Ooh, since I'm in can. here. Yeah. Mine um, is like three so, a day. <laughs> I so go through the... waves. 
Yeah, so this is also down. Okay. But the past m a month or like in October, I've been doing 370 puzzles. Jeez. So I, yeah, so I guess okay. if we do 370 divided by 21, that's like 17 puzzles a day, but it is okay. a bit down. So I was crazier in, in September, yeah. but October has been crazy hectic. But uh, okay. yeah, I do a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. I was doing a period where uh, I had an account where the maximum puzzles I could do a day was 25. And so I would yeah. just always do the maximum. And my theory was yeah. I'm just going to do puzzles until chess.com tells me I can't do anymore. And that really helped yeah. a lot. Like having that motivation that like I don't even have to regulate. The site will regulate for me. Uh, I could feel it in my games as well. 25 a day, every day for like three months was a lot of puzzles. Yeah, it really helps. And I feel like now I'm in that part of my chess journey that I'm realizing that what everyone that is good at chess is saying, it's true. Like yeah. they're saying, do tactics, play games, analyze stop with the bullshit and and now i'm kind of at at that stage where I'm, i feel like i'm listening mm -hmm. and i can see that it works so it's really funny <laughs> okay so you've cut out things like trying to learn about rook end games and uh i don't know what outpost is best for the night oh you know what to say all rook and end games are draws so i don't think you actually need to study those <laughs> uh but no, I'm just, I'm joking. I'm joking. Of course, um, yeah, I don't have anything against uh, studying and games, except personally, it's not my favorite thing to do. Uh, if I'm allowed to say that, or if it's like uh, cursing in the church, you know, I'm, I'm still a little bit traumatized from when I was at the, a course in the chess club and I dare to say that I found one thing about just a little bit boring and then everyone in the club turned around and looked at me like I was insane and said wow. nothing about chess is boring what are you saying so I am a bit scared to say that but but it's like okay. it, it's not my favorite thing to do it but I should probably do a bit more in game studying uh, but right now I'm just having fun playing and analyzing and doing tactics I'd say on really? this podcast, you're allowed to have your own opinion. It's okay. We 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 support that. You're you're allowed to. Do yeah. I hope I will not get crucified. <laughs> okay. It was so... actually a bit fun because. Um, sorry, I'm a bit chatty today. I haven't been talking about chess uh, for a while, so I got a bit uh, overexcited here to be talking to you. But uh, but actually, this weekend I got uh, I got a message on um, on Twitter. There was uh, someone I'm friends with there who had been without me knowing, been watching me play live on chess.com. Oh, wow. And they messaged me on Twitter and they said, you have to practice your endgame. You could have promoted that queen much earlier. And then I had to say, you, you know what? I, I had a bottle of wine this evening. So, <laughs> you know, I, I did my best. But <laughs> There you go. Thanks for the feedback, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is always funny when people do that. Uh playing OTB chess can be like that sometimes where it's like, you know, after the game by people want to give you all their thoughts and it's like I appreciate all your thoughts, but right now I'm just trying to gather up the shell of the person that I was and put it back together <laughs> a little bit and then later, later I want to hear all your ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I, I think everyone can relate to what you were saying there so i don't know uh, can can i ask are, are you doing like a lot of end game studies lately or um no i i haven't been doing much end game um uh, uh every time i have noel studer on um he he makes fun of me for spending <laughs> too much time on tasks that have too little payoff um, so yeah, I had him on recently. So he's like my, um, get back on track guy. So every time he comes yeah. on, I'm like, all right, I'm back on the steps method. I'm just doing tactics, playing, analyze my games and a little bit of other stuff. So I'm, I'm kind of on a good track right now, but when I get on a bad track, I'll dive right back into Rook end games, which for some reason, I, <laughs> I feel like we're demonizing Rook end games. We should probably not do that. <laughs> I think it's more that. 
when you're like 1700 rook end games are probably not the thing that has the biggest uh payoff but i think that's payoff yeah yeah but at the same time i guess the best studying you could do are the things you find fun um but yeah i, I do agree with uh, noel studer a lot regarding playing and analyzing and doing tactics when i started like doing that meticulously i f i feel like i had a lot of uh, gains and i i got a lot stronger yeah i agree uh so circling back to your point about like having a competition with someone in puzzles my puzzle rating reached its all-time high when a friend of the show jay garrison and i i passed him and so i texted him and i was like hey jay check out your <laughs> friends list you're not first anymore and so then he texted me back like 10 minutes later and for like five days we were just going back and forth and like his rating got over three thousand, and mine got like <laughs> 2980 but then i couldn't pass him and then it just like fell off a cliff for some reason so but it was a, yeah. it was a fun competition trying to like have that that short-term goal that you're chasing there yeah and i think that uh that uh, helps a lot with uh, motivation and studying. And you know what? I've been talking a lot about these things lately. I talked about them with uh, uh, Dr. Khan recently. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we talked about it because I'm doing my part-time studies in pedagogy. Oh. And I started to realize that uh, you actually need other people to learn. Uh, I started to realize that, uh, you know, in the... <laughs> My, my humble age of 32 so that was a bit late but uh but yeah that could also be a part of why it's so good to learn with other people like you can motivate each other you could do like these small uh competitions that are not that serious but a bit more fun and uh, have a little bit of banter that's great exactly. okay you, you just dropped a little nugget earlier that you just said like i haven't had much time to play otb chess have you just been like out of the OTB chess scene for a bit? Like, has life gotten too busy or what's going on with your over-the-board chess? Yeah, I haven't been playing over-the-board chess uh, since spring 2023. So I've been on a long break, uh, to be honest. And I think the reason for that, it's, it's several things. Like, I won't only uh, put the blame on a lack of time because I feel like... Uh, I could make time if I'm motivated to play over the board. Uh, but it, I think it's a combination I, I, that I did so many tournaments in such a short amount of time, like nine classical tournaments in a row, that oh, wow. I got a bit burned out. And also I started to realize about myself that I'm not very, uh, I, I'm, I don't thrive in the competition setting mm. because I get so nervous and uh will have trouble sleeping uh, uh get upset stomach like it will take a lot of energy and then it's also the energy of traveling and yeah so i've just not been eager to do it but i have to be honest that lately i've actually started to feel a bit of that uh um uh, what should you say, spark like i'm feeling a bit motivated to actually go out and play again because i feel like now I've been spending a lot of time improving. I feel like I've gotten stronger and it would be cool to just test uh, my skills over the board and see, mm -hmm. uh, will I get some good games, maybe analyze them with my coach. So, so I'm getting motivated to do that. But realistically, I don't think it, it will happen this year. Um, uh, I think it will be something for 2025. And then I think that uh, will also be a part of maybe breaking the plateau i find myself on right now because i do feel like going out and playing over the board seriously it's probably the best thing i did for my chess improvement uh like it helped my skills so much and i feel like this is honestly what i need if i want to get to the next level uh, i don't know how you feel about that if you feel like the over the board uh, tournaments uh, helps your improvement or if it's uh, just me yeah i think it sounds like we're a little bit different and maybe it's mm. because you're not playing over the board when i wasn't playing over the board i was able to like play long online games and really focus and be like this is serious but now that i am playing over the board i have a much harder time focusing in online mm. and so then the over the board games become those really important longer games and since i get a game every week but i will say 
they are like psychologically devastating. So like you're talking about the sleep side and the nervous side, and I get that side. I don't have that issue. But when I lose to like, you know, the underrated kid who's rated like a thousand, it's very damaging psychologically, right? It's like, well, what am I even doing then? Um, and so that that part I think is the really hard part for me. And continually voluntarily putting yourself in that situation is frustrating. Yeah, I totally get that. I had the same issue as well when I played over the board. Uh, what I will say is that I felt like that, like before I started playing over the board, I started, I felt like that playing online games. So actually going out and playing over the board and then realized, oh, this is a bit more serious setting. And then I got my heart broken there. So when I went back to the online games, I was able to chill and not care so much when I lost yeah. this uh, online game. So so that was a good thing for me. But I, I do totally understand where you come from. And especially if you couple that up, like losing to that underrated kid, and then you will have people coming up to you and be like, yeah, did you not see on like <laughs> yeah, move 25, you had an easy yeah. win. And then you're just like, no, obviously I didn't see it because <laughs> I would have done it then. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I get what you're saying. That, that last game specifically was last week. And this is nothing against the kid. The kid was very nice. But after the game, he was like, I think you could have taken my queen in that one spot and then come back and done this and won. So he both beat me and saw how I could have won. And I was like, <laughs> so it's like he beat me twice. It's like, oh my god. Uh, okay, so so you're having some issues like concentrating when you play online. So what, what I think we should do is that we should do some classical matches against each other. Mm. And then we should also do it on stream because then you will have some some pressure on you. And also you should have the upper hand because I feel like you you are a bit stronger than me as well. But I think maybe that would help you concentrate and get some nice online games in. If you do like match up against chess yeah. punks, maybe stream it, like do something around it. Maybe that could help. Yeah, I think so. I think like we almost put that together this summer and I was super excited. But then it was at the end of the summer and the end of the summer got really hard for me really fast. It was funny. It was like, I got all the time in the world. And I was like, oh, my goodness, school starts in a week. Oh, my. I forgot. <laughs> I have a thousand things I have to do. So now that I'm settled into the rhythm of the school year, I I, I think maybe we could be able to make that happen. Well, we, sh we should definitely try. I think it would be fun. I think it would be a lot of fun. And I also think the other chess punks uh, uh, like it when we kind of like do this uh small happenings and matchups uh yeah yeah so if you're listening to the podcast and you want to see us go head to head on stream <laughs> let us know let us know let either of us know or both of us know we we will maybe we can make it happen i think it'd be fun yeah, um, i think i will definitely take a beating but uh, i'm happy to get some quality games <laughs> okay so you've said a couple times you think i'm stronger than you i we just have to hear them what what are your ratings these days uh on leeches, I'm slowly creeping towards 2000, which I'm very, very oh. excited about. Right. Uh, but on chess.com, I'm, I'm like uh, pretty stable on 15, 1600. Um, and also that uh, is a bit similar to my feed rating, which is 1570. Um, so, so I guess I would say like 1517. No, no, oh. 1516. Uh, but it's more fun to say the leeches rating. Oh, yeah. It's higher. <laughs> Okay, you ready for this wild thing? I think yeah. my chess.com rating might be higher than my Lee Chess rating right now. In, in, in what? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So, you, you have not been playing on Lee Chess probably, or? No, no, the opposite. I, I went on this awesome run on chess.com and I hit 1935. And then I've gotten into a slump. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm just going to play on Lee Chess. Lee Chess is my, like, I don't care what my rating is. I'm just having fun. I'm just, I'm just improving at chess. And on Lee Chess, I think I'm like 1950. So it's quite funny that those two ratings are almost the same. I'm like the only person in the world uh, where that's the case. So uh, I don't know. Oh, in fact, my rapid rating has dropped to 1917 on Lee Chess. It's official. My chess.com <laughs> rapid is higher than my Lee Chess. So. I don't think I've ever heard about that uh, before, mean, actually. That's uh, a real but anomaly. if you're. But if you are in a slump, maybe that is my chance to beat you. <laughs> it is. It is. Everyone can beat me right now. So we'll, we'll see. We'll no, see. no. 
I would definitely be terrified to be uh, to to play you because I feel like you're the complete opposite playing style from me. Like oh. I, I I haven't really watched you play. I watched you play some blitz on stream, but I feel like you're a bit more sensible. You're strategic. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Uh, you're a bit you're you're a bit smarter than me about how you go about things. While I'm a bit more crazy. <laughs> you like to make it complicated and get <laughs> yeah. in there and attack. Yeah, and I I think you would just uh, I I I feel like you would make me very impatient because I would be like when uh, when is this action happening and then I would just self destruct. I feel like <laughs> interesting. Okay, because I feel the opposite. I'm like I really? like games to be quiet and careful and deliberate. And even when people do bad attacks against me, I find that the computer's like, that is a terrible attack. And it often <laughs> works. And uh, I've been trying to read books on like defending. And uh, yeah, that's kind of where I've been putting a little focus because it's, uh, I find it, I find it annoying when, uh, you know, someone <laughs> does a bad attack and beats me. I don't mind if they do a good attack yeah. and beat me. That's fine. But bad attacks that win, oh, that that's frustrating. So. Yeah, it makes me really mad when I'm like playing with black and then I face the Yubaba London and then they just do the standard H4, H5 thing that everyone does. And then I'm just like, can you stop doing that? It's so rude. And then they beat me and then I get really mad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Like, that wasn't even a real attack. What was happening? Yep. <laughs> that, that is, uh, that's how I feel. Um, I did notice your your fide rating jumped up pretty dramatically was that on fide christmas is that was that the result of the jump or did you play a tournament in there yeah definitely fide christmas okay uh, uh, to be honest i wish i was a bit more strategic and i played a bit more before fide christmas so i could <laughs> get even more christmas gifts <laughs> But uh, but now I think I actually just need to get out there and play so I don't lose my rating. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think like when you've been inactive for a certain oh, amount of time, you you lose it or something. I think it's three years oh. or something. I don't actually know all the rules. I also mm -hmm. think it's weird that if you drop below a certain rating, you just like it just you just disappear, which is also weird. disappear. Yeah. <laughs> you're well, not like you're not worthy out. of having a number. <laughs> yeah, you're you're out. Um, so I think that's weird. I, I think I gave all my FIDE Christmas presents back. I'm pretty sure. I think I gave them uh, all to, back to, FIDE, to other you, players. You gave them, yeah, you gave them to the underrated ki uh, children. Yeah, yeah. I was like, um, let's do, how do we, how do, we do it? Regifting. I regifted my FIDE. <laughs> <to other people. laughs> but, uh, but it's nice of you to give like, uh, yeah. uh, what should you say, rating presents to the children? Yeah, I think I'm, that's a nice I'm basically thing to do. Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, maybe okay. uh, you you know maybe we should just like become uh, weird people that only exclusively partake in tournaments with the people over a certain age to avoid the problem altogether. <laughs> yeah, I don't think this is weird. I think this is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, though, this summer I played in a uh, senior tournament because I'm now past 50. And that's the that's the insulting senior age for chess. Um, and so I played with all seniors. And guess what? They're still really good at chess. It was very annoying. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to get some rating. My rating didn't move at all. It was the same as when I came in. I was like, OK, all right. They're, they're also good at chess. Everyone's good at chess but me. This is really annoying. Yeah. I feel pretty happy that somehow I managed to um, not care so much about my rating anymore. Um, it feels quite liberating, uh, to be honest. Yeah. Can you give me some advice on how to not care? Because I like to say I don't care, and I do a pretty good job of it. And then I lose to somebody 700 points lower than me, and then I care. I think for me, I just needed to start to find the humor in it. And uh, I talked a little bit with uh, Dr. Khan about this as well. Um, I think it was actually Andras Toth I was talking to. And, and I told him, and I don't think he agreed at all, to be honest. But, <laughs> but I told him, I, I feel like it's, it's its own charm 
to be 1300, 1400, 1500, go uh -huh. up those stages because chess changes from the beginner level to the expert level. Yeah. Like all those funny, stupid, weird things that happen on my level, it will prob would probably not, uh, you know, happen as frequently yeah. or when I, if I was uh, better rated and I get to do like some cheesy king attack. I get to do a cheesy checkmate. And <laughs> I feel like I just want to enjoy where I'm at. And then when I make this insane blunders, I just try to find the fun in it. And I try mm. to laugh at it. And I think what helped me uh, with this was um, streaming. Because what I realized when I'm streaming and I'm doing these mistakes, if I get mad at myself, I'm kind of killing the vibe for the audience uh, because I get this stinky vibe and then uh, nobody wants to be there so I have to, have to learn to like laugh and, and and see the fun in it so 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 that's uh, that that has helped me and yeah. unless your vibe starts <laughs> angry you could just be like the angry <laughs> chess streamer <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I think uh, actually it was uh, Camille the uh, ch uh, chessable author Mm -hmm. uh, who, who told me because he was uh, he was my coach for the chess punks tournament. Oh, he okay. told me he used to have this problem with um, destroying his uh, computer mouses when oh, he lost the no. chess because he would just throw <laughs> them in the wall. <laughs> wow! I, I, I couldn't really relate to that, but uh, I guess uh, we're all different. So I'm, I'm trying to just laugh and think. You know what? I'll never be fifteen hundred again. Uh, just enjoy the journey. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think that's a really great approach. I've tried very much to take that on myself. I do a better job online. When I lose to something ridiculous online, I just kind of laugh at myself and go, okay, let's file that one away. Don't do that again. <laughs> but yeah. over the board is so much harder for some reason. There's like a person there and they're staring at you. Then they come back the next week and they're like, did you see that thing? And you're like, of course I saw that thing. You think I didn't look at my games? So. I think yeah, I think it's probably much harder to, over the board. Um, I haven't been playing since 2023 spring, so I've probably also forgotten a bit how difficult it actually is. But, you know, when it's like, uh, uh, because I moved out of Oslo, like to... Uh, so a bit more remote so I would have to mm. travel into Oslo probably to play mm. and I would have to do that after work you know you're tired after work you have to draw, drive all the way to the club then you have to play probably a classical game it could last for many 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 hours and then you have a good game and you just throw it away for something stupid and then yeah. you have to drive all the way back home and then it's up next day to go to work you know and, and it's a bit it's a bit more annoying in a way because you spend mm. so much energy on it yeah. Uh, so I don't know. I, it's a it's a bit more hard, I think. Yeah, I feel like every Thursday, if you know me well, you know what happened, whether I won or lost on Wednesday night. <laughs> like you don't have to ask. Like <laughs> if I'm walking around, like I don't even have to walk on the ground. I won. And if I'm uh, kind of mopey that day, come on, come on. We know what happens. We all. It's like y your wife knows. <laughs> when you go get in the door <laughs> yeah I, I try to do a really good job of not letting it show with my wife because i think it's hard for her as it is right like i lead yeah. to do chess things and so like like the, like last wednesday i was very upset and we were just talking and it was like yep uh my daughter won both of her games and she was like oh that's awesome she's like how did you do and i was like oh i lost and she's like oh i didn't i didn't know and i was like okay good so i, I hit it from one person so that was good <laughs> yeah how is your daughter doing with the chess by the way um she is doing well she enjoys it as like her sixth favorite activity so yeah. <laughs> you know like she likes to go to the club and play and every now and then she'll do a couple puzzles at home she has a lesson once a week but that's about it like if i'll say like hey what if instead of playing dress to impress on Roblox, if you were to play a chess <laughs> game, she would be like, that sounds like a punishment. Um, so, you know, it's it's hard, I think, to make like that progress that some kids make while having yeah. such a low time investment. So, but she's enjoying it still. And 
Um, my thought is I'm not really that kind of parent who tries to force their kids to be into things and it's just their journey. And so I'm trying very hard not to influence that more than subtle suggestions. Sometimes I'm like, Hey, you want to do some puzzles with me? And then sometimes she's like, sure, let's do that. So, but yeah, that, yeah. that's where she's at. <laughs> I think that's nice that you're not pushing. And also, it's probably nice to have something you can do together. Yeah. Sounds nice. I don't have, a, like, my, my partner refuses just point blank to play with me ever again. Yeah. Uh, I have gotten too good, uh, uh -huh. is what you're saying. <laughs> and I, I'm trying to tell him, like, what if I remove a rook? I can remove my queen. And Ooh. it's just like, no, no, that's, uh, that's humiliating. I don't want to mm. do that. And then it's just like... That's hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you tried time odds? Time outs? Time odds. Oh, time odds. I yeah, check out the odds I do with my daughter. She gets yeah. 55 minutes with a five second increment. I get 10 seconds with a five. Uh, it's a delay, not an increment. A five second delay, yeah. 10 seconds. So each move, I basically have five seconds to decide. And I have a one time bank. Of like an extra eight seconds if I need it. And she gets all the time in the world. Um, she does very well on those time controls. Yeah, I've been trying to suggest it. You know, both material odd, time odds. And I've also been uh, suggesting if I could do blindfold chess. And he Ooh, can that's play fun. while seeing. But uh, he just refuses. I think it's like an attack on his masculinity or something. So I've just uh, stopped nagging about it. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard if i remember correctly i don't know if this is the same partner but the first time i talked to you it felt like you guys were just getting to that phase where he was realizing like you you guys were sort of even ish and now you're getting much yeah. better than him so i could see you know a year and a half later that he'd be like no 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 now you're now you're far too much better than me yeah when when i started playing chess see we went to the uh chess course together uh, and I think actually he was a slight little bit better than me in the beginning. So he would beat mm -hmm. me like, I think 50, 60% of the times. Yeah. But now, uh, obviously, uh, <laughs> I sound so mean, but he doesn't stand a chance. So yeah. I guess it's just not fun anymore. But uh, yeah, yeah, my my wife and I went through a very similar trajectory. Um, yeah, we were, we were equal. And then I started studying chess and she said I was cheating. Because, yeah, I remember you, you know. said that. That was very interesting that you said yeah. you were cheating. Because and I kind of get it. It's like if we both have a thing we're doing together and then one person spends extra time on it, of course they're going to be better at it. So. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a hard, it was a hard yeah. one to reconcile. Um, we didn't talk about this yet. I, that's a failure on my part. But if you are interested in hearing about Sulve's uh, previous appearance on Chess Journey, she was on episode 91 and I remember in that episode, we talked about like, um, how can you get in contact with other chess players? And we talked about the hashtag chess punks. Um, I'm going to assume you have uh, made contact with other chess players. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> like the chess punks uh, community has been, oh, it's been awesome. And it was so fun when I was on your podcast for the first time, because I actually asked you where where yeah. are you guys i can't find you online you're not on tiktok you're not on instagram where are you and and you were like it's it, oh we're on, we're on twitter uh or x or whatever yeah, you have to use the hashtag hash, uh, hashtag uh, chess punks and i remember i was skeptical i even mm -hmm. asked you are you sure about that <laughs> like if i post something with hashtag uh, chess punks people are going to see it or care or whatever but but i took your advice and i i posted the uh, night from my chessboard with hashtag uh, chess books mm -hmm. and i got connected with all of you and to be honest i don't think i would have um, been doing the tournament coverage that i've been doing mm -hmm. uh the chessable course that i've been doing uh the streaming uh i don't think i would have been doing anything uh, of these things if it ha hadn't been f for you telling me to get connected with the chess punks to be honest because uh, all of this is like uh, a uh, um, it's because of the chess punks community uh, and because of connecting with all of you guys so I just have to, to say thank you for getting me in touch with the chess punks it's been 
amazing and I've met so many new friends. I've been talking to so many amazing people and it's been really great. So I think if like any of your listeners still have not connected with the chess punks, uh, you should do it uh, because there's so many awesome people uh, that's part of that community. And it's just like you said, it's so positive, that community. It's weird that uh, that you're able to foster such a positive community online. I have not seen anything like it. It's yeah. not toxic. It's just uh, nice people. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird and amazing. And it's why I'm still on Twitter because there every day I'm like, is this the day where I leave Twitter? And then I'm like, no, yeah. then I wouldn't have the chess punks community. It's like, that's the only yeah. thing for myself. It's the only thing on any social media that I do. I'm not on any other social media. And I'm like, wow, I could be this rare person that's on no social media if I just got rid of Twitter. But then I'm like, but I would miss my beloved chess punks. So if yeah. the chess punks are looking to move anywhere, I don't know. I'm open. I'm open to. Uh, to movement migrating and, yeah exactly migrating yeah the twitter platform has really gone downhill uh yeah. last uh, couple of years i guess it was all already on a downhill trajectory when i joined uh, mm -hmm. after our chat yeah unfortunately <laughs> have you found but, um other places to be bastions of chess like tiktok or instagram or anything like that has it been popping up there or is it still sort mm. of uh, still just on twitter I feel like it's very different. Uh, I feel like chess on TikTok, it's uh, not that popular. Um, and uh, Instagram um, has a little bit of chess, but I feel like that is much more meme saturated. And uh, so like the funny clips and all of these things. Uh, but, but I feel like X is pretty special in a way because it's more grown up. It's more serious. Like uh, you can have serious discussions, post puzzles, and it, it's not all about the memes. Like, of course, some memes here and there, it's funny, but uh, it's it's totally different. Um, I guess that would be the main difference. And I guess YouTube is also a good community, but I feel like that is even more geared towards the educational part. So it's not that much um, focus on the social interactions in a way that's more about consuming content, or at least that is my impression. Yeah, mine, mine as well. All right. Well, that, that's definitely how I was feeling about all these platforms. So it feels like what you're saying is I'm stuck on Twitter for now. That's what I'm hearing. You're stuck with us. <laughs> Blue sky isn't taking <laughs> off. No. Uh... Uh, I heard some rumors uh, about this uh, platform. I don't really know what it is, to be honest. But uh, if you find out you're migrating over there, I will definitely yeah. follow. But I don't think uh, chess banks are dying on Twitter anytime soon. I don't have yeah. the impression. Yeah, me too. I think, I mean, I, I, what I've done is just like pared down more and more of the people who I follow. And it's basically like, if you're a chess punk, you're in my, my feed. If you are not a chess punk, then you're not. Like, as simple <laughs> yeah. as that. So it works pretty yeah. well. Yeah, and I guess if you follow the chess punks and you interact with their chess punks posts, like on my Twitter account, I don't see so I almost only see chess content. Yeah. Because that's the only thing I engage with. So yeah. Okay. Let, let's go a little bit deeper into your improvement for the last couple of last year and a half. And then we're gonna talk more about your chessable course, your interviews, your commentating. It feels like you've been doing all sorts of cool stuff. So just a quick summary, your improvement plan seems to be playing, looking at games, and doing piles and piles and piles of puzzles. Would you say that is the primary improvement plan? Yeah, definitely. And uh, also, I'm doing the uh, chessable course writing, so then I get into some interesting topics. Hmm. Uh, and then I feel like experimenting with specific things in my games like for now, I've been studying a lot of Morphe games. Oh. Um, and then uh, when I play, I, I'm, I'm trying to have a specific focus. Like, sounds very stupid, but it's like, what would Morphe do in this situation? Like, I, I will yeah. try to experiment. Like, okay, maybe I should just try in this game, go for rapid development. Uh, and uh, maybe at the cost of material even. And then... Um, Maybe I do that for a little period and then 
in another period, maybe there's like another player I'm inspired by. And I will think more about, okay, try to take extra time before playing. Try really hard to not blunder anything play more slowly more controlled and then just test out different things in my games so that i don't do the same thing over and over and over but actually test out different things and try to explore uh different facets of my chess personality so that uh, because i i feel like what comes more natural for me is this uh attacking style uh, with focus on initiative development, that is what I really like and find fun. But at the same time, uh, you also have to develop flexibility because not in every situation this uh, mindset is going to work because sometimes the position will demand other things from you. So then I think it's very important to just experiment with that so that you're, uh, you're, you become more flexible. And also... Um, I've been experimenting with uh, loads of different openings. And when I say that, I'm not saying that I've been memorizing 20 lines of theory and various openings with sidelines, all of this. I just have a general idea of setup and plans. Mm. So it doesn't take much to um, figure that out. It's not a huge time investment. Uh, just to get exposure to more uh, pawn structures and, and, and middle game structures. Because if you just play the same set up over and over and over you kind of get into the same pawn structures and i think it's really good to get uh, exposure to many different things and i think also a lot of this experimentation is a little bit why um i would say this is my excuse i would say this is because my rating is not higher because you know i think if i had played the same opening over and over and over and got really good in that one I think maybe it would be easier to build on that rating, but because when you try something new, you're going to get your butt kicked so much uh, from people who are more experienced in that, those structure. But I think over time, the payoff is going to be good uh, to do that experimentation because sometimes you can play an opening and then something weird happens and you get out of theory and suddenly you find yourself in a completely different pawn structure and you are on unfamiliar territory. So then it's really good to have some some experience, at least from a similar situation. Uh, I think I talked myself uh, away from uh, what we were supposed to talk about now. No, no, that was perfect. <laughs> Did I answer um, the question? <laughs> yeah, and I, and I also agree with that. Like, I, I very much have just stuck with a couple of openings. And, like, there were a couple of games in a row even where someone steered us into a Benoni and I play an opening where Benonis aren't as common and my coach is like wait what why did you do that it's it's clearly <laughs> a Benoni structure so this is the obvious move and I was like that's a Benoni and he's like what what do you mean that's a <laughs> yeah. Benoni? you're like a 1700 and you don't even know what a Benoni is I'm like, I, yeah. like I know the term I, I know generally what it is but I didn't know any plans so I hear what you're saying that having that you will feel less unfamiliar in new terrain if you have a wider sort of base to draw from. So I guess my question is, you say you're you're not trying to memorize, you know, tons of theory. What are the what's the approach you have to even get that sort of base level information? Are you going working from books like chessable courses? What helps you get on your way? Honestly, I just try to uh, focus on the core principles. Uh, of the opening, I try to focus on center, uh, rapid development, and king safety, mm. and try to think for myself from the first move instead of um, copying what stronger players do. Um, and many times I will get into maybe a middle game position that could have been a lot better, but then again, you learn a lot from it in the post game analysis. Uh, because then you can clearly see uh, what you did wrong. Um, so I think many openings, I have no idea what to do. Like uh, I've been play playing E4 since I've been playing E4 for one and a half year, and I still don't know theory against the French <laughs> or the the, the pirates. Like I, I just put two pawns in the center and then I try to be creative basically. Um, and this is a little bit uh, also because I got a little bit of a smack on my fingers from uh, Andras Toth, uh, 
yeah. because I asked him uh, and he very generously agreed. Uh, he, he looked at uh, a selection of my games and yeah. I asked him, what is my what is my clear weakness? What is the clear thing I'm doing wrong? Yeah. And he told me it's you're doing the same thing over and over and you're expecting different uh, uh, results. Like yeah. I would play, I really love the Vienna, the Grand Prix, like the cheesy king attack. And I would try to do that over and over. And he would tell me the same thing that your coach told you, uh, just a little bit different. And he said, why are you playing the Grand Prix plans when this is a French structure? Uh, and I was like, what is this French structure? What does that mean? And then I started to realize, okay, Solvay, you actually, you have to start thinking for yourself. Just cut it with these uh, openings. Just... Mm try to follow the principles and be creative and it is a little bit scary and you will maybe spend a lot of time in the opening but i feel like this is also one of the things that feels a little bit liberating right now with not playing over the board tournaments mm -hmm. because i don't know if i would feel comfortable with this approach <laughs> at the at the in a tournament because i because there everyone is booked up. So that is also in a way one of the reasons I've been a bit hesitant to go back and play tournaments because I feel like, oh, if I'm going to play a tournament, I will need to have a repertoire. I will need to book up. And now I even started to experiment with playing the Sicilian. And I don't know any theory. I just play C5 and hope for the best. I like C5 it. and hope for the best variation. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I feel like I can't do that in a tournament because I will get completely destroyed. But I don't know, I guess for my own learning, that experimentation approach would probably be good in a tournament as well, because you really get to think about your moves and then the analysis with your coach after would be good. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm just rambling in a way. What, what do you think about all of this? <laughs> yeah, I think it's such a fun way to do openings. Um, I've done that before. I won't do it um, over the board. Like you said, I feel... I don't know. I feel too nervous that my opponent will punish me somehow when I actually think the reality is they won't, um, mm. you know, like it'll be fine, but that's at least in my head as well, that it'll go poorly. But I love just being like, you know what? I'm in the mood to play the Nidorf today. Do I know any Nidorf theory anymore? No, the, the theory <laughs> I know is 20 years old and I didn't even know it well yeah. then. Um, but sure. What could go wrong? <laughs> and it's super fun. And then if I lose, I'm like, yeah. well, I mean, like, I don't even know what I'm doing, but I had a good time. I played a new structure. It was a fun time. So I actually really think that that is a very enjoyable way to learn about new openings. Um, I do, yeah. at least for myself, I feel like it's important to look at those games afterwards and be like, okay, if I'm going to yeah. do this, like, let me see at least like what would a better player have done who say knows their opening theory? What, what might their approach have been? Um, yeah. And I feel like fun. many of the mistakes, many of the mistakes I make, in the opening when I try to play creatively and think for myself, it's not because I haven't remembered this theoretical move. It's because I broke the principle somehow. Um, like I shouldn't have moved that officer twice in the opening or here I should have played for the center. Mm -hmm. I should have got castled earlier. So I feel like it. these mistakes that I do, they reflect sensible things things so that very often I should have been able to deduct what was the best move anyway mm. um, but I don't know it's just what I'm feeling and sometimes I also get very inspired by the games that uh, the chess banks are, are posting on uh, on X like uh, not that long ago I think it was a couple of months ago I saw Neil Bruce post uh, one of his uh, games against the Karo Khan and he played the exchange variation and he just uh, wrote something. If you're a lower rated player, you should try the exchange variation mm -hmm. because they blunder the queen so often in this line or whatever. And I looked at the game <laughs> and okay. I sort of like memorized, okay, bishop go here, bishop goes here. You do this, this, and this, and I just memorized mm -hmm. the setup. And then I started trying it out in my own games. And then I realized that, you know what, this is actually pretty fun. And I've been just having mm -hmm. such a hard time against the Karakam. So sometimes I would just test out things that you guys do as well. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny because I feel the same way. One of the reasons I stopped playing E4, it was basically the Karo Khan and the French. I just, both of them, I was like, yeah, like these aren't powerhouse openings that are like aggressively destroying me, but I cannot figure out how to handle them. So I don't know. I should have tried uh, 
the one thing that helped me to get stronger against the French was that I tested out the French myself and then I lost every single game in the French because then I got a good viewpoint of how my opponent sounded. So that was, yeah. <laughs> that was and, a nice tip. I got checkmated so many times on the king side when I tested out the French. <laughs> it's funny because I play the Karo Khan and I don't think it's unbeatable. But when I play against it, I'm like, it's unbeatable. I'm like, what? <laughs> you play that opening, you know it's not unbeatable. What are you even talking about? Yeah. So I don't know. It's, that's so I just switched to D four and now it's easy. Now I don't have to worry about those openings. Um, I wanted to set out as well. I haven't played uh, D four since I started playing chess. Yeah, I want to like test it out. It's fun. Like, well, I mean, let me rephrase that. It's fun if you like. <laughs> and I guess that's not even true to say this. What I'm going to say is not true. It's fun if you like <laughs> like slower, more positional games. But I think you can also play D four really aggressively. That's just kind of like the. Yeah, um, how some just look at the uh, look at Andras Toth. He has some crazy aggressive games with the D4. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I play it in a more like plodding, slow yeah. way. Yeah. So yeah, but I I did have um I played a D4 uh, exchange slob, which is thought to be like the most boring thing you could do, and I checkmated my opponent. I moved twenty one, and so I was like, I mean, just because it starts boring doesn't mean it has to stay boring. So, that's that's, that's a good that's a good quote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I, I like I was building a chessable course, and I was like, okay, all right, this is hard. I feel feel unqualified to do this, but I'm gonna do it. And then you released a chessable course, and I was like, dang, okay. So how did you feel about doing this? Like, why did you do it? What was your process like? Are you happy you did it? Um, tell tell us about doing a chessable course. Yeah, I had no idea why they contacted me when they contacted me. And I was just like, is this a, a mistake? Do you know I'm uh, not that good at chess? What What's going on here? Um, but uh, the more I talked with them, the more I understood the reasoning. Uh, um, and uh, uh, of course, I was nervous to do it. I felt a bit of imposter syndrome. Like mm -hmm. I'm only 15, 16, 1600 rated i'm not a title player but at the same time i am also education manager and i've been working in the vocational school for five years now and i've been developing teaching and educational content for a long time yeah um, person. and i'm also doing like my pedagogy studies and i also had uh you know my coach international master peter haugli i had had him as a consultant mm -hmm. um so I could, uh, he did the quality controls. I felt safe, like the content was of uh, a good enough uh, quality. Um, and uh, yeah, I was very nervous about how it would be received because some people in the chess community can be a bit weird about people who are below 2000, like they have uh, lesser IQs or something. Uh, but uh, I, I didn't receive anything negative at all and uh, the reception has been fantastic uh, it's right. been uh, great reviews coming in and people are really satisfied the course firm is active so I chat with the students uh, a lot and uh, they also post their breaking 1000 games on the course forum uh, oh, so that cool. uh, you can see they, they really get to work through that plateau and, and that is Kind, kind of what Chessable wanted is that, you know, um, there's a bit of a hole in the learning materials for um, adult chess improvers because a lot of the beginner books are geared towards children. Yeah. But uh, also many of the books that allegedly are geared towards beginners uh, are very difficult. Like yeah. this book right here is one of my favorites, oh, yeah. like this book series. The yep. Build Up Your Chess series by Arthur Yusupov. Mm -hmm. It's really good. I love this book. It's one of my favorites. But when I just had learned how the pieces move, I struggled a lot with the exercises in this book. Yeah. Uh, it is geared towards 0 to 1500. But to be honest, even at the 1500 level, there's still some puzzles in here that I find hard. Yeah. So uh, I've been talking to Chessable about this and Sometimes it's easier to learn from someone who is closer to your level because they can remember how it felt to not know anything. And, and when you have all of these 
chest patterns integrated in your muscle memory uh, when you easily can visualize deep lines without any trouble if you excelled at chess when you were a child it's hard to thoroughly emphasize with an adult who learned just learn how the pieces move let's say age 30 40 like you you can't really put yourself in that situation um even at my chess club uh, 1500s are teaching beginners so it's it's hmm. it's it's quite common in a way so yeah. i think it's a good step to get more truly beginner friendly chess material and, and 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 that belief got reinforced when i saw the reviews because uh, people are happy about it and yeah i just think it's uh, important to have a good quality and control and as long as you have that uh, yeah i think it's i think it's great and i'm super happy i did it uh, it really propelled my own chess skills as well to create a course mm. because yeah of course the the chess book course is called breaking 1000 so there's a lot of the basic things that you might feel that you have worked through at the 15 1600 level but when you when it actually comes down to articulating it in a way that is easily understandable for the people listening or reading it's not so easy to articulate it you know so because you have to truly understand it in a deep way so i i felt like i learned a whole lot from it and uh, it made me better as well so it was a nice uh, it was a nice uh, learning and writing journey uh of course it takes a lot of energy to create a chessable course uh yeah. lots of uh, long nights recording and writing i wasn't quite ready for the amount of effort it would take um yeah I haven't even done the recording part yet. Like I'm just about to start that piece of the journey, which um, hopefully that won't be too much. We'll we'll see. I, I've done a lot of streaming and I do the podcast. Yeah. So I'm hoping that those skills will translate pretty easily over to the recording. So we'll see. Yeah, for me, the writing was definitely easier. Um, but even like I... I never told this uh, to anyone actually, but actually the the last chapters I wrote it while being uh, hospitalized. So I was actually oh, in the hospital no. when I wrote uh, the last chapters. Like not even Chessable knows this. I think if I was being honest about that, they would probably say, "Come back and write this later when you're like healthy." But it was yeah. nice to have something else to do because it can be boring to be in the hospital sometimes. But I thought about it like when we launched the course because. I think like often you just see the finalized product yeah, and then you have these ideas about how, how is the production phase? Maybe it's like, oh, someone is sitting, you know, in a nicely lit office. They have their <laughs> cup of coffee, Yeah, maybe some classical music uh, <laughs> playing. Uh, you, you have the oven cracking, but oh. then, you know, reality is pretty far away from that. And even like the video shooting, um, for me, that was in a pretty like um, hectic period because I was in the middle of moving and I was situated in a really small apartment where it was impossible to get the room dark. So, and oh. my uh, office setup was directly in front of the window. So I would get a lot of sunlight on me. So I couldn't really record because the video quality got too bad. So I actually had to record at night. Uh, oh, okay. So I shot all of my videos like after work. I would shoot between eleven p.m. to three a.m. Oh, geez. in 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 the night. So it's like I haven't really told anyone about this either. Uh, not chessable either. So I hope they won't see this and be like, "Yes, yeah, why you should have told us this and blah blah." blah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm I'm not one to complain. Yeah. But but it's like sometimes it can be. Y you never know what goes into creating these things. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. All the little, the little pieces of production are can be really challenging. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get similar feedback because I have this giant window in the place where I'm planning to record, and they're probably gonna be like, "What?" Because I did record a spe a graduation speech during COVID for my school, and I sent it to them, and they were like, "What? This quality <laughs> is not good enough. You there's too much light on you." And I was like, "Well, yeah. you have two choices: you can use it or not use it." 
that those are here. You should uh, you should get blackout curtains. <clears throat> yeah, I think I'm gonna have to. I currently have yeah. basically translucent curtains, so that's probably not. The it's best. either blackout curtains or you have to record in the middle of the night, like I, I did. Do that. And I would I, I would not record. I would not recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely can't. Um, I have to say, looking through your reviews, I think this is the best reviewed course I've ever seen on Chessable. Because it looks like it's a five-star rating, which is impossible. Okay, it's only 4.88. Good. Because there's always some <laughs> knucklehead who's like, I'm 2,800, and I bought this course breaking 1,000, and I'm so disappointed. And you're like, did you read the title? Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, but, like yeah. I haven't gotten, I haven't gotten any knock on wood <laughs> i haven't gotten any negative feedback and also if you go into the course forum i think you have i think everyone has access there you'll be able to yeah. see it's quite uh, active uh, so i feel like we have a nice community in there and uh, yeah for sure yeah it's been a yeah. lot of fun that's what i've been most impressed by not only are the reviews really good but there's so much content just in your forum so many people talking yeah it just looks like fun i'm like ah i'm so jealous i hope my course ends up anything anything like this because it's such a such a fun community you have going on so that's that's amazing yeah, i think the best i think the best thing we can do is like um um ask the uh, ask the audience to like participate on the forum mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's it's very different from author to author how much time they have to invest in participating on the forum uh, but I think like, even if you just invest, you know, 30 minutes each week on just showing your face on the forum, it means a lot to the people who bought the course. Yeah. And it's very in line with these pedagogical models about social learning and social constructivism. And I think it's such a great opportunity to use the course forum to get uh, learners talking with each other and discuss the content. Uh, it helps them retain the material for longer and and learn uh, deeper and it's also fun for us to see okay what what are you working with right now uh, yeah, can definitely. i help in any way you know yeah i'm i'm hoping to do something similar my course is also you know it's it's the same thing right like why if you're 1500 would you build a course for like 2000 so it doesn't make sense right so i feel like mm -hmm. my course is also geared for you know the the lower rating range somewhere between like 500 and 1500 is probably the range of my course. The top end is the top end. I'll just say is hard. Like there's yeah. some, there's some hard stuff in there, but, but that's not the majority of it. So, so we'll see. Um, I'm curious about your commentating career. Just like suddenly yeah. I'm seeing you everywhere. How did this come about? Um, I don't know. I just get asked to do things and then i've been having this long period of being a yes man like saying yes to absolutely everything and i have to admit right now i just feel like i'm a bit burnt out because i've been saying yes to everything so right now i feel like i'm in a phase where i'm saying more no to things mm -hmm. um but yeah uh i basically just got asked can you do, do you want to do these things and then i say yes and then I do it. <laughs> nice. So, uh, yeah, but uh, but also uh, it's a little bit about um, having the courage to take up space, I think, where you are. And I think this is something that can feel challenging for everyone. Uh, I think it can feel especially challenging for um in, in the chess community for women, maybe, because you are um, I'm a minority in a way. Like, there's there's so many men, and then it can feel a bit more scary to, to take up space. But but I feel like, uh, like I would say, the vast majority of all the men I've met in the chess community has been so positive and warm and welcoming. And I feel like you appreciate uh, appreciate it when a woman joins and takes up space. Like, I don't feel it's frowned upon at all, but it can feel scary. But I also think it's important for other women to see women doing that. Um, and uh, yeah, even at, uh, I was at Norway just this, um, uh, not that long ago, I was covering 
it was the another podcast Shack Snack in Norwegian one. They were doing a Guinness World Record <laughs> for That's for the cool. longest uh, consecutive game played. And I was there only working with their Guinness World Record attempt, right? So mm-hmm. I wasn't affiliated with Norway Chess or anything like that. But then it's a little bit about daring to take up space. So mm-hmm. you're at this tournament, you have this interviewing gear, and you want to create cool content for them because they have hired you to do it, right? And then you have all of these uh, top chess players that yeah. are interested in the world record match. Like I would see Karwana pop by and just look, are they still playing? How is it going? Mm-hmm. And then actually to have the courage to just go up to him and ask, can I ask you a couple of questions? And then you're not affiliated with Norway chess. So I think many people would feel scared to do that. And to be honest, I was really scared to do it as well. But then I thought just like, hey, what do you have to lose? Uh, worst case, he says no. Um so uh yeah just uh, daring to take up space and 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 do things uh okay. worst thing that can happen is you get to know and you will never get anything you you don't uh ask for in a way sure. so so that's kind of been the philosophy <laughs> okay so say yes try to take up some space when you can and uh take chances yes sounds like your chess playing uh strategy yeah Actually, <laughs> get, uh, get get some space on the board. No, <laughs> yeah, get some space on the yeah. board and and uh, take some chances attacking that king. All right. Yeah, I never I never draw that parallel, but you uh, but you're right. Yeah, uh, it was I kind of feel like that parallel applies to me as well. Like if I saw Caruana at my chess club, even though I have a chess podcast, I wouldn't even say hi to him because I'd be like, yeah. oh, it's Fabiano. I shouldn't yeah. talk to him. And then tons of people would be talking yeah. to him. And I'd be like, oh, that's so rude of them to be talking to him. And it's like, yeah, what? No, it's yeah. not. It's not rude at all. He came to your chess club to talk to chess players. Yeah, it's a very I, I totally get where you're coming from. Um, I have to admit, I, w- I was really scared to do it because I'm, I'm from a very small town in, in Norway. And Norwegians are, culturally speaking, we are very weird. Like, we mm. don't socialize and in Norway, uh, if you're taking the bus, people will think you're a weirdo if you sit down next to someone yeah. uh, or if you are too close to them. Like we really value privacy and our way of showing respect is to not bother other people in a way. Mm, yeah. So to actually go up to these people, it's so far out of my comfort zone. Mm. Like... um, um but but I did it for the ones I worked for in a way because I wanted to create content for them. But also when I got the chance to ask Hikaru um, about the world record attempt, I had been thinking about it for days. If I get the chance to ask him about the attempt, I also want to ask him about women in chess because I feel like he's an ally because he's doing so many good things for women in chess. And... I think to get a statement from him would mean so much uh, for girls and women. So then I did it, but I was so nervous before I went up to him. Like my hand was shaking like this and, you know, there's a lot of people around you, uh, cameras. And then you're just like, if I get rejected now, I will get rejected in front of everyone. And I will just feel like the biggest loser in the world. Right. So, uh, but you know what? The, the top chess players, they're, they're really nice. Uh, like I would say, we talked about Corona, and I would say, I think he's the most polite person I met in my life. He's so oh. nice. Really, really nice guy. Um, he certainly comes across that way. Yeah. I haven't met him, and I'll never will, because even if he's right next to me, I'll be like, oh my goodness, it's Fabiano. I don't want to <laughs> disturb him. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. We'll see. I get that. <clears throat> maybe maybe I can change that mentality. Um, all right. Well, we have spent a lot of time together. Let me ask you one last question. Um, are you doing any coaching? Either are you coaching people or is anyone coaching you? I am not coaching people. Uh, well, I kind of am through my chess book course in a way. Okay. <laughs> because yeah, I also participate. Yeah, so, and I also participate on the uh, course forum because I will ask them 
uh, or like uh, encourage them to post their games so we others can have a look at it um, and, the, and discuss the games. So I guess that could be coaching in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm I'm doing coaching myself from uh, Petter Haugli, who who's okay. the consultant on my course. Um, he's also the cons- consultant on my next course, who's I'm, who that I'm working on right now. Spoiler. Uh, Okay. Do we get to know what so, it's about, or is it still in the secret phase? Yeah, it's about um, developing courage over the board. Mm. Uh, so, so it's uh, it's it's kind of fun. Um, I feel like a lot of beginners they uh, they ha- they get traumatized early, like from the scholar's mate or opponent bringing out the queen early or they get crushed and then maybe they get scared and they adapt this uh, turtle strategy and struggle a bit to get out of their shell and take up space and dare to attack so it's a little bit about that so it's interesting to have a course about that but geared towards beginners because it is a bit of an advanced topic in a way so Mm. I definitely have the word uh, cut out for me but uh, but I'm very lucky to have uh, uh, Petter um, as a consultant because he's like he's an amazing peer reviewer and uh, yeah we're just looking at master games together he's also looking at uh, some not so master games by me <laughs> and uh, doing a lot of game analysis so it, it's great we have a really good dynamic and I think that is the most important thing when you have a coach because it's kind of almost like finding a therapist in a way. Uh, because if you have a therapist but you have shitty chemistry, um, yeah, you, you're probably not going to get far. And I think it's the same thing with a coach. You need to find someone who you have good chemistry with, you click. And even I think it's cool if you have a bit of the same playing style. And also Petter, he is... Uh, very he doesn't look like it but he's a really aggressive player but he's like uh, yeah so nice. yeah that's 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 great i don't know are you doing any coaching or yeah and i really agree with that that it's in some ways it's like i, I actually think now that i think about it the first 10 minutes of our lessons are our chess therapy he starts and he's yeah like, so how are you doing <laughs> and then either it's uh because i'll have it like one day after my game either it's like i'm doing great because I won, or like, oh, I'm a broken human now because I lost. Yeah. And then it's like, all right, let's take the first couple of minutes to talk about how to like put yourself back together. And now we'll take that lesson and we'll put it into the actual game you played. And we'll talk about the places where, you know, you could have done better or, you know, went wrong. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it definitely feels like it's both chess and therapy mixed together. So I think that's a really good point. If you have, really terrible yeah. chemistry with a GM, they might not be the best coach for you. They might be the best coach for someone mm. else, but they might not be the best coach for you. And I feel like from what I know about you and even just from talking to you a couple of times, I feel like you're you're kind of a little bit like me in a way that you're, um, you're a bit hard on yourself for the mistakes that you make. And you expect a lot of things from yourself. And, and I think the worst thing for you would be to have like a coach who punishes you a lot for your mistakes, because (laughs) I feel, I feel like you are whipping yourself enough. You don't need any more whippings, Mm -hmm. but then you also have um, other personality types who take too easy on, on their mistakes and they don't care that much and they maybe need someone who whip them a bit. (laughs) So, so it's uh, really important to find that person who, understands you in a way and that you click with it's like even in the vocational school when i've been doing teaching uh, it's always some personality types you just click better with you have better chemistry and we've been talking about this in my pedagogy studies as well because as a teacher you need to be flexible because students are so different different personalities uh, uh, different uh, knowledge level different upbringings cultures and for some students, you need to be a bit more uh, maternal. Uh, you need to be softer. And in other situations, you need to be a bit more author- authoritarian and strict. And uh, and I feel like, I don't know if you will believe it, but I actually feel a bit more on the strict side. Uh, and I can struggle sometimes uh, 
being that uh, really soft uh, version of myself that some students demand. Mm. And, and I've been asking like my pedagogy teacher, can you be the perfect teacher for everyone? Yeah. And she's just like, no, you, you yeah. can't be that. You can be the best teacher that you can mm. for everyone and try to adapt and be flexible and patient. But there's always certain personality types you will just click and for those you will be the best teacher um, and for the others you can only like try your best and um, even that is a little bit about uh, our chest personalities as well like maybe I will always gravitate towards the attacking uh, uh, fast you know uh, initiative uh, development playing style and and then I, I can try to become better at this uh, positional things, but maybe that will never be my strength in a way, but I can try to mediate the uh, damage. <laughs> but but the, I think that has to be okay because we're different. Yeah, uh, I, I resonate with a lot of that. As it, I'm also a high school teacher and I totally agree with the idea of like, every kid needs something different. You can't really be everything to anyone everyone you can do your best I, I definitely do my best and I think I'm lucky that I've had so many different interests and career paths I'm able to connect with students on different levels which I think really helps you know like oh you're into uh, uh hello kitty well my children had a huge hello kitty phase so let's talk hello kitty and then <laughs> some other kids into sports and I can talk to them about that and I was a musician and so it's like I can handle I can do that but but at the end of the day you know your, your teaching style you can you can adapt it, but it is what it is, and yeah, I think the same thing with your chess style. Um, when I read Karpov, I'm like, yes, this is how I want to play. And when I read an <laughs> attacker, I'm like, it's too much, it's too much. What yeah. are you doing? It's too dangerous. <laughs> You're living on the edge. <laughs> <laughs> living on the edge, yeah. <laughs> nope. oh, that's fun. All right. Well, Sulva, I think uh, we've reached the end of our conversation here. I look forward to the next one. Um, let's see. By then, you'll probably be the official commentator of the St. Louis Chess Club. You'll have nine chess courses under your belt, and it'll be like six months from now. So I look forward to seeing all that you accomplish in in a little bit here. And uh, good luck. Where um, can people reach you if they want to get in touch with you? where they can reach me well uh, possible course forum that's one place yeah i'm pretty active there um and then i guess on twitter i'm rookie redhead um also on instagram i'm rookie redhead mm. um i'm not always the best on answering uh, but i would love to love to connect anyways and yeah, I'm rookie red dead everywhere. Like people are having some issues with my name now because they feel like I'm not a rookie anymore, but I feel like it's it's too late to change it and I can't really find a good uh, uh intermediate for... redhead. <laughs> yeah, intermediate redhead it just has doesn't have the same uh, cling to it. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that does not sound great. But, uh, but thank you for believing so much in me, Kevin. I don't think I believe uh, that much in myself, but uh, I, I sure appreciate it. And I owe a lot to you for, for having me on that first episode and telling me about the Chess Punks community. It's been... I've, I've been having so much fun since we uh, talked the last time. And I would just like to repeat that if anyone in, in the audience still has not checked out the Chess Punks you should go and do it because you don't know what you're missing out on. You're missing out on a lot of cool puzzles, that's for sure. Yeah. And games sure. and discussions. Yeah. And Susan <laughs> Polgar just randomly saying hi, which is awesome. Yeah. Oh my God. The first time she said hi to me, I think I just uh, started screaming. I was just like, oh my God, Susan <laughs> Polgar said hi to me. But she's actually pretty active in the chess punks community, yeah, which is really very is. fun. She is. She is quite a chess punk. All right. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, if this is the week where uh, you lose to seven someone who's 700 points lower than you and you see all your rating points disappear, it's okay. They might not come back, but they might come back. And if you come back next week, you'll have an even better shot of, uh, of learning something new that will help them attract back to you. So have a great one, everybody, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>